What's up, everyone? My name is Joshua T. Borglin. I think I'm live. This is the first time I'm really trying to do a real live broadcast straight from YouTube. So be nice to me, everyone. I'm I'm kind of new and bashful. So <laughs> anyway, thank you so much for being here. I um I want to do live because I'm trying to simplify my life a little bit. I mean, I'm already taking the time to to edit and cut things up and do clips and all of those things, but the initial recording of the broadcast, I'm like, I treat this as if I'm doing live anyway. It's not like I'm editing the oohs, the ahs, and the ums, and everything else out of um, what it is that I talk about because, well, I'm not perfect. <laughs> it's exhausting to try to per to appear perfect. Uh, all of these amazing new editing softwares that we have that will automatically remove the ums and ahs, and, and, and it can make it sound like we're coherent when maybe we're not. And the thing about all of the clips, and we're actually going to talk about gene editing today, but I'm going to rant about clips real quick. You know, I, I love clips because they give me this temporary dopamine fix of, hey, this is great. More people are watching my content on YouTube. And the truth is that I have this up and down relationship with YouTube. I don't really understand it. Sometimes I get views. Sometimes I don't. Even on short, sometimes I do. Sometimes I don't. But I don't care because I like this live platform. And I'm going to use it. I don't want to go to kick. I don't want to go anywhere like that. I'm just just going to use YouTube. Uh, and it just simplifies my life. And my goal in what I'm doing as a one-person media organization is finding different ways to simplify the process and to speed up the process in what I do as far as production and so forth. Anyway, so I'm glad that you're here today. Uh, this is, again... The first real live intentional broadcast that I've done ever on YouTube. I've used multi-purpose uh, streaming software in the past and then got away from that because I just simply wanted, um, I, I, I would just kept having issues and problems every time I was trying to do a live and I don't know. So long story short, started doing pre-recorded because I wanted more professional looking broadcast. I wanted my broadcast to appear like they belong on TV. And uh, and now I don't care about that anymore <laughs> at all. I learned how to do all of these amazing things with editing and production. And now simply, I would rather just not edit uh, at all. I'm, I'm glad I learned it, but I you know, would rather you see the screw ups and all that stuff. So anyway, thank you again for being here. So today we're going to talk about gene editing. And oh, really quick. You see that bottle? Where's my finger? That one right there. That bottle right there is the sponsor of this broadcast that is Genostem. You can go to genostem.com. Uh, that's G-E-N-O-S-T-I-M.com. And you will see all of this amazing information. It's almost overwhelming because there's a lot to it. The science behind organic peptides is just immense. And uh, I'm so proud to be a distributor of this product. Not, it's not network marketing. It's not multi-level marketing. Not trying to sign anyone up. In fact, I don't care if you buy it or not. Um, it is a game changer. It will absolutely improve your health. It will absolutely make a huge difference in your life. It will act, It will absolutely uh, improve your health. I've got the blood work to prove it. But honestly, if you don't buy it, that's your that's your choice. But I am so happy that I was able to eliminate my supplement cabinet of all of these extra things because the peptides are doing it for me. It's awesome. So thank you to Genostem. You can use the promo code MAYOR to save 20% on your order, your risk-free order. And that means that you get a money-back guarantee if um, if you don't like it. In other words, you can get your money back. Anyway, okay, enough with that. Let's get into gene editing. So, you know, I've heard about designer babies uh, in my life, I've heard about being able to modify DNA and uh, we can make these glamour babies. I've heard of all of that. And then I think about Hitler and the, the what was it, the perfect race that he was trying to create of human. And then, you know, and so and we've seen on magazine covers like Time and Newsweek and, and other magazines and including uh, there's been a lot of scholarly articles to come out about gene editing. And the fact is that there's pros and cons to this. There's there's absolutely, uh, there's going to be positives. And, and the positives are in just, they're immense. But, but there's a whole other side to it. 
it's kind of like this, like our cell phones. Our cell phones the, are just such a great example of convenience, being able to communicate on demand in a way that we see fit, whether it's through writing, whether it's through a video, whether it's through audio. It is like everything is there on demand. The internet is right there in our pocket. The internet is just everything like we want, right? And the internet, we can search and buy and research and get information. Don't know if it's true or not, but we can get information. We have all that access. And it's been amazing. It's transformed businesses. It's created jobs that didn't exist before. But then it's also created problems that didn't exist before. Or enhanced problems that had existed, but because of convenience, it's turned into something that's become more wicked. And so there's pros and cons to our phones. There's pros and cons to electricity. There's pros and cons to getting a million dollars. There's pros and cons to everything. And so where most articles or most broadcasts that, you know, with the internet, the way it works now, and I believe that this is changing with everything in me, maybe it's already changing now. But right now, where we where the internet rewards niche and you focus on that, you just pump out content about that specific niche and you hammer it. That's how you're rewarded. But so that there's no reward system for presenting a full spectrum approach. Like they the internet rewards opinion and stick into that. But really, this would be better if we just shared all of the information and provided value in that sense where, hey, look, there's pros, but here's there's cons too. So with that said, let's get into gene editing. Greetings, everyone. And so I prepared this um, today. And so I'm going to read some of it because there's a lot of information here. There's no way I could, you know, that I could memorize. Um, I should tell you this, that and this was the same way when I when I had a when I was an evangelist and I had a ministry. Um, and I would always say that I'm not a qualified preacher. I was put into this position uh, because I had the opportunity, and I'm not afraid to speak. I'm not afraid to. I love <laughs> I love broadcasting. I love speaking on stage. And when I was given the opportunity to do my talk show at a church, um, I went for it. But I'm not qualified to be a preacher. I wasn't then and I'm not now. Um, and I'm not an expert in gene editing. I'm not. But I did research. I prepared information. And the way that I like to approach most broadcast is simply by saying that I, I'd like to learn with you. I'm curious. I have interest. I have things that, you know, to me, I'm going, you know, I, 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 I want to know more. And for me, one of the best ways that I learn is reading out loud and discussing it. And so that's what we're going to do here today. So I'm not an expert on gene editing. Don't come to me to speak at your, well, actually, I would speak at your gene editing conference, <laughs> but <laughs> I'm just learning along with everyone else. So here we go. Greetings, everyone. It's a pleasure to be here with you today. We're diving into the fascinating world of gene editing, a cutting-edge technology that allows scientists to make precise changes to an organism's DNA. This groundbreaking innovation has the potential to revolutionize the way we approach genetic diseases, agriculture, and conservation efforts. In this presentation, we will explore the moral implications and the advantages and disadvantages of gene editing. And I encourage you to share your thoughts and questions throughout our discussion. What is gene editing? Gene editing is the process that enables scientists to modify, insert, or delete specific genetic sequences, offering incredible opportunities for genetic manipulation. One of the most... <laughs> One of the most widely used gene editing tools, CRISPR-Cas9, is derived from bacterial defense systems that target and cleaves gene editing. Wait, I'm sorry. I, let me reread that sentence. Dad gummit. <laughs> this is, you know, me and reading out loud is a new thing. And uh, goodness gracious. Okay. That is a little embarrassing. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> 
Okay, so what is gene editing? Gene editing is the process that enables scientists to modify, insert, or delete genetic sequences, <sighs> offering incredible opportunities for genetic manipulation. One of the most widely used gene editing tools, CRISPR-Cas9, is derived from a bacterial defense system that targets and cleaves foreign DNA. This technology has significantly simplified and accelerated the process of gene editing. In addition to its applications in medicine and agriculture, gene editing is being explored in areas such as biofuel production and environmental cleanup in synthetic biology. I wonder what the synthetic, the synthetic biology is. Hmm, I wonder. Anyway, pros, the pros, there is benefits absolutely of gene editing. Improved disease treatment. Gene editing has shown promise in treating not only genetic disorders, but also infectious diseases, cancer and neurodegenerative, de, neurodegenerative conditions through targeted gene therapies. Boy, talking is not easy today. Agriculture advancements is another area. Gene edited crops can be developed with enhanced nutritional profiles, reduced environmental impact, and increased resilience to climate change, contributing to sustainable agriculture. I got a question about this. And, and this is something I, I, again, I prepared this and I pulled from a bunch of different articles and other things to, to put this together. But the thing I want to understand is, can you edit the gene of a crop and it still be organic? In other words, would it still be, if you you edited the genes of a crop what that was an organic crop, would it still be organic after you adjusted the genes, changed the genes, if you modified them? Would it still be that? Or is it now synthetic? I want to know that. Okay. So gene edited crops can be developed with enhanced nutritional profiles, reduced environmental impact, and increased resilience to climate change, contributing to sustainable agriculture. Huh. Conservation efforts. By genetically modifying endangered species or enhancing their adaptability, gene editing can play a vital role in biodiversity mm -hmm. conservation and ecosystem restoration. Boy, that's, that sure feels like playing God. Is that wrong, though? Don't we play God every day? Hmm. Okay, so let's get into some of the cons of gene editing. Ethical dilemmas. Oh, my question. The ethical considerations of gene editing extend to issues of informed consent, genetic privacy, potential unintended consequences, and the societal impact of altering the human germline. Yeah, that's playing God. Whew. Boy, is this like Noah and the flood right now? I mean, this is kind of what I'm like. I'm reading this and I want to be fair. <laughs> but holy crap. Okay, unintended consequences. Des despite its precision, gene editing techniques may lead to unintended genetic changes, off-target mutations, or alterations that could have long-term effects on both the individual and the environment. Whoo! Here's another one. And this is for all the people that scream they want equality in everything. Inequality. The accessibility and affordability of gene editing technologies could create disparities in healthcare education, and social opportunities exacerbating existing inequalities, inequalities in society. Yeah, because, I mean, there is an inequality now, and I do believe that things are better in some ways, worse than others. But this, I mean, so then, like, how do we know LeBron James isn't genetically modified? I mean, I'm, I'm just saying this as an example. Like, if you're going to create designer babies, isn't it possible that you would just create designer athletes going, you know what? So I'm going to go get a loan. I'm going to go to the bank. And this is kind of a crazy bank. And all, you know, 
never mind. I'm not going to go on a rant about banking, but this bank, for whatever reason, will let you invest in creating human beings. God, this is very singularity like. Uh, anyway, uh, not completely, but pieces. Anyway, so you, I, I, I now go on. Okay, so I have this genetic disposition to be somewhat of a good athlete, and that person over there is good looking, and so then, okay, so that, I'm going to take that DNA and that DNA and that DNA, and then I'm going to put it together. So, okay, this is going to cost me a couple hundred grand. So, all right, well, so the NBA salaries are this much a year now. But if I think about TV contracts, the economy, where we're going with media, okay, so now being an athlete, okay, so 20 years from now, they'll grow up and they'll be, oh, so we're going to genetically modify humans. And then that becomes a business. Because, I mean, some people believe we're already slaves anyway, because, you know, when we're born, we're, we're basically born into debt. <laughs> so... I can imagine that now because humans are business and property, like we're property of somebody, we're business to pay off someone's debt. So then I think, well, if I can modify this baby and make the supreme baby that's going to drive revenue for owners of teams and owners of companies and merchandise. And oh, I, so there's a whole economy in that person. By the way, one of the reasons why I'm so passionate about media is because I have realized that we are walking economies. Our intellectual property, our gifts, our talents, us, what God created us to be, has so much value. And, and, and I'm not even saying value as in LeBron James value. I'm saying that you, the way that you are now, the way that you are made up, the way that God created you, the gifts and talents that you were given, that made you worth something of value. Now, now, who's going to be most important, you or your fellow man? Because that becomes a whole other conversation. Boy, I don't want to splinter off into that conversation. But let's stick with gene, uh, gene editing. I can totally see why people would see that gene editing is also a business opportunity. It makes perfect sense to create these. I mean, think about Chet Holm, Holgren, or however you say his last name, plays for the Oklahoma City Thunder, uh, the Wimby guy from San Antonio. They, it's like they were designed to be the perfect basketball players. And I'm gift from God, God created. I mean, I know it's possible, but I also know that we've been eating a lot of synthetic food with a lot of synthetic dyes. There's a lot of hormones in our food. There's a lot going on. And then you got all the stuff they're spraying in the sky. Who knows what that really is? You've got all this talk about mRNA vaccinations and mRNA, this and that. And like mRNA has been around for a long time and it was originally used for mind control. So, I mean, gene editing, um, these, the, the, the rumors about the vaccines and what it does and the mRNA technology, then you've got graphene oxide, then you've got the frequency and the 5g, like what is going on? Like, are we creating, are we creating machines? Is that what it's happening? Is it not even through vaccines that this is happening, that it's happening through other ways too? Whoo. There's a lot going on. I mean, this is just a, are we leveling the playing field? Or are we just creating an even worse problem? I'll tell you one thing. We can't stop the progression of technology unless if we pull the plug. And so we got to pull the plug or we got to find a way to work with the technology. I don't know what's going to win. Holy Moses, this is interesting. Okay. Let's get into some moral implications of gene editing, as if I haven't talked about enough. The moral implications of gene editing encompass discussions on human dignity, the sanctity, sanctity of life, and the potential commodification of genetic information and traits. Considerations of disruptive justice, fairness, and the impact of gene editing on marginalized communities are essential in shaping ethical frameworks for the responsible use of this technology. Balancing individual rights with societal interests, cultural norms, and international regulations is critical in addressing the moral complexities of gene editing. 
In conclusion, as we navigate this dynamic landscape of gene editing, continuous dialogue and collaboration among scientists, policymakers, ethnicists, ethnists, <laughs> and the public are essential to guide ethical implementation and regulation of this powerful technology. My name is Joshua T. Berglund, and I'm grateful that you're here. Um, I'm really like this conversation uh, to me needs to be had, and it needs to be had by people that don't know what they're talking about, the people that really do, and then the people in the middle. And the reason I'm saying this is because there is a level of ignorance about gene editing that exists. I'm ignorant about gene editing. I learned a lot through this, through reading this. And and then and just in, and then putting this together, and I mean, it's just, we got to have this conversation because there's so many benefits to it. And if we could eradicate certain mental illnesses, if we could eradicate Down syndrome, if we could eradicate um, any of these other illnesses, cleft lip palate, of, uh, I mean, any genetic abnormal or abnormal, geez, I can't talk. Um, like we have an opportunity to be able to heal people. But yet at the same time, if it's not regulated, like we could create a monster that we can't control. But then who do you have regulated? Because that's a lot of power. I think about Batman. I think about, uh, I, I forgot which Batman it is, but there's the Batman where he's got the wall and on the screens, it's got nothing but people or it's got, it's basically tracking everybody. And Morgan Freeman, the character's like, that's too much power. And Batman's like, well, you know, I'm, I'm, that's why I'm giving it to you because I shouldn't have that much power. And so like, it's a lot of power. The responsibility that people in power have is, well, I mean, obviously godlike in some ways, not to be blasphemous, but this is a lot. And so now they're already playing God, practicing gene editing and everything else. So really, how far along are they that we don't know about? So is it too late for these discussions? Is it too late for the discussion about what's happening with AI? I mean, and here's what I believe based on the things that I've seen with the groups of people we get to work with. There's, there's a huge demographic of people that want nothing to do with the World Economic Forum, yet at the same time, they want nothing to do with stopping the progress of technology. So there's people with money that are building ecosystems that are meant to offset what's being done with World Economic Forum in the United Nations, smart cities, freedom cities, stuff like that. But who's to say that when they have that power, they won't abuse it? And that is one of the reasons why I believe that we're going tribal as a world. Because... No one's going to trust their leaders. I don't know if they do now, but that those days are over. <laughs> and I believe that this world dominance of anyone is over. I believe that the days of mega celebrity are over. And I believe that we all have an opportunity to step into our positions as leaders, as thought leaders, Educators, I believe, educators, especially people that are teaching, will be the new celebrity in the new world because they're going to be responsible for educating the like the wisdom, right? The wisdom from teachers is going to be responsible for educating and help guide the creators of the new world because this current world, in my opinion, is being destroyed and a new world is coming up. That new world is the, our opportunity to, to build it up right and to build up the world that we want to see, the world that we want to be in. That's this opportunity that we have. But it's like we're being given godlike power again. How are we going to use it? I don't know the answer to that. 
Because I know this. There was a time in my life that I used to have a whole bunch of money. And I was an a-hole with money. I wasted it. I wasn't a good steward. I didn't know those lessons. And I lost everything. Got all my money back and then lost it again because I was an idiot. I hadn't given up my drug habits and everything else. And I hadn't learned, I still hadn't learned to be a good steward. But then, you know, God worked on me because I was willing to be worked on. <laughs> and because of that, I've been on this long journey of rehabilitating my life. And it sucked. It has sucked. It has been tough. It has not been easy. And I wouldn't trade it for the world. And in part of that, what it's allowed me to do, because I haven't been blind, like all my personal goals and all of these things that I want to accomplish, like I've felt far away from for a while because I left LA and LA is right where everything was. But I also believe that sometimes we're pulled out of an area that we're in to be able to work on something to rebuild, whatever it may be to heal before we're put back into a certain situation. And that's not a bad thing. I've learned to not hate it when God does that. It's like being sidelined for a little bit. And at first, the first few times I'd been sidelined, I uh, was very, um, um, I think I was really pissed off at God about that. <laughs> and I acted pissed off and I got my hand bit because of it, because I was basically being disobedient. And, and so it, may, it reminds me, as I say that of the, the Bible verses that I don't, I think it's in Ephesian where it talks about the seasons. There's a time and season for everything. There's a time to, to, to reap, sow, to plant, harvest, and on and on and on to kill. And, um, you know, so I, I, I learned to not sweat being sidelined, but I got to tell you that, um, cause I really believe that those promises that we have, that God shows us, and I believe that God showing us comes from downloads, you know, obviously sometimes God will communicate through other people. We can read it when reading the Bible or any other Holy text, cause God can speak through James Patterson novels from my experience. And, um, so I don't think it's limited to anything, but obviously reading a holy book would be beneficial. Um, I think, I think, I'm sure. But again, God can speak and use anything. But there's no, like I've learned through this time that, you know, like I, I want to be in the game. I believe that when God shows us something that is a promise, especially when we're seeing it over and over and over again, but that promise doesn't mean it's going to happen today. <laughs> And that's one of the things that I took so long to learn about visions and what it meant. And then today I was listening to something and it said, you don't want those visions like to happen right when you get them, which I'm like, well, you know, like that sounds crazy. Of course I would want it, but no, not necessarily. Because if we're not ready for it, if we're not ready to be a good steward for those blessings and we're not mature enough to be able to handle what's happening in that moment. You know, we get some negative feedback and we're not emotionally or spiritually mature enough to not bite their face off. You know, there's all kinds of stuff like that. And so God's timing, I don't know how I branched off into this, but God's timing always proves to be perfect. And I'm grateful for that. Now, sticking with gene editing, what we were talking about on this broadcast, um, there's a lot of decisions that you know, we have to make, and I think the only way to get through this is by making decisions that are, that we feel is best for us, prayerful decisions, Pr because I don't think that we can really trust our fellow man at this time to really say what you're saying is true, because how do we know it's just not a perception of that? And we're not just taking someone's opinion to be true, then applying it to our lives, and that may not belong in our life. So the, the gene editing, AI, the advancements of technology, I don't believe that we can stop it. And I don't believe that we want to, but right speaking voices need to be heard and right speaking, heartfelt voices, true voices need to start speaking because if this goes the way of greed, we're in trouble. But I believe right now we're at a unique position where 
we can we can take the power back. We can redistribute the power and make it where the hands the power lies in the hands of millions, not one, not two, not three, not four, not five, not six, millions. That's what I'm rooting for. That's what I'm going for. I don't know how gene editing go, falls into that, but the fact is the science is here. It exists and it's not going away. Thank you for watching.